and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the DMF range of machine tools from DMG Mori. I'm joined by Paul and Gio. Let's get straight into it. Paul, just to start with, for those that are unaware of this range, just tell us what configuration the machine is, what style it is. So in essence, what you've got is a traveling column machine here, which has got a four meter, uh, four meter X axis, which essentially, yeah, you can have a partition um, in between, or you can use the full length of the table as you see in the, on the screen here. Um, you can have such a variance of, of options with the machine. You know, whether you're looking at introducing a, an indexing unit, fourth axis unit, even integrated uh, tables into the machine to do turning as well as grinding. Where this machine is going now is it, it, it really is about multi, multi processing. There's nothing you can't really do on these machines. You'll see the tables here that have come onto the machine, integrated tables here for, uh, for both turning and, and five axis machining with the head that moves to get to different angles too. And that partition, would you believe, can be um, taken in and out within 15 minutes. For me, when I look at a machine like this, Paul, it really just shouts out flexibility. You know, these machine shops out there where they're not really sure what parts they're going to be making day to day, this machine tool ticks all the boxes. And with that central partition as well, you're actually doing the setups while the other side of the machine is running. So you, you, you're getting your setup for free in certain scenarios, but then when you've got the big, big parts, like you mentioned, you can just open it up and take the central partition away and you've got all of that capability in regards to all of the axes as well as... as the, you can put tombstones in there, there's various things you can do, isn't there? But if we, as you say, Paul, the range itself isn't, isn't new, but this particular model is. So what technology, what innovations have they put into this machine that's making it even better than its predecessor? I think as we look at on this um, series of, uh, of videos, we always talk about on, the, on these episodes about the, the, the changes and the value they add to, to the user. Everything these days is about speed, it's about speed of manufacturing, it's about speed of tool change, it's about, you mentioned flexibility and um, the, the capabilities of the machine, how you achieve different operations on the machine or different disciplines of machining. Here the y-axis moves completely or, uh, independently so you get no you know, you, you get no possibility of droop. It's a new, that the whole casting moves backwards and forwards. So you've got a lot of strength and you've got the ability to machine and get the same results or whatever corner of the machine tool you are, how far it is away from uh, the back column. Now the tool changer actually is housed right alongside the, the working spindle but it doesn't change it in the working area. It retracts and it changes it outside of the working area, comes back into the working area and then does the machining. So there's no possibilities of collision. You don't have to worry about where parts are positioned and you don't have to worry about planning the manufacturing of your part around where a tool changer is. I mean, they're just, they're, they're just two, two points. The sailor's control, it's, it's not new, but what is new, all these new, every time I see one, there's more apps. And, uh, you know, and it's it's very iPad-esque, I, I suppose. But it just, you wouldn't want me on running one of these anymore. It's been some time since I've been on a, a CNC machine tool. But it looks so intuitive, you know, quite uh, low barrier to entry in terms of learning your, your stuff. I think it really lends itself to the next generation of engineers, doesn't it? You know, they're all playing on their iPhones and iPads every single day and they've really tapped into that market. I think that these new generation of engineers will just pick it up second nature and I think that that's where they're targeting or are targeting is, is the next generation of engineers and simplifying programming so it's not a barrier to entry for the next generation of engineers. Like we talk about with others, there's, there's eco modes, they're eco-friendly, you know, they, they have to these days, they have to when the machine's not running, it, you know, there's no power being used, they have to consider it within the, the software algorithms to ensure that the amount of power being, you know, used within operations is, is as minimal as possible, so I'm sure there's probably, you know, videos or there's probably media that relate to uh, the green credentials, but, but, I, but I can tell you it'd be one of the things that they seriously consider. In, in outside of the software, the hardware, a couple of the points to mention as well, when you have a machine of such magnitude and size, holding tolerance, holding positioning, you know, the, th the thermal compensation, all, all the ball screws are chilled on this machine. Uh, you know, so you've got all of the, the kind of features within the construction that allow you to keep the machine tight and able to machine, you know, from one end of the table to the other, really, really tight, tight tolerances. It's endless, like, 
great video this. It's demonstrating uh, it's turning, full simultaneous five axis machining on smaller, medium, even large components. Um, we see a lot of DMG mowing machines in massive companies. We also see them in SMEs, startup companies. Geo, where do you see this machine fit in? Or maybe it's all of those. I think it's all of them, Joe. I think that anyone that's currently got a free axis machine tool that's looking to take their business to the, ne the next level should be considering a machine such as this because of its capabilities and versatility. I think it, it lends itself to a multitude of applications, turning, milling, and everything in between, fifth axis machining, um, introduction of fourth axis or fifth axis tables on there as well is a, is a big um, selling point for me, but it also lends itself to any material as well. So it, it, it's not going to be shy of cutting them really hard exotic materials. And, and the robustness of, the, of, of these machines speaks for itself. I think that, that that's a, a, good, a done deal straight away when you mentioned DMG, Mori. One thing can't be overlooked is the uh, the B axis, is it? That you know that full rotation is that probably 110 degrees plus or minus. 120 both ways, but yeah, it allows you to get into those those kind of negative angles, which was always, you know, which was always something where people had to maybe flip the part in order to achieve the operation. But now, if you can get kind of you know under those angles, that allows you to complete parts without having to reset them. But you don't have to plan your machining around the weakness on the machine, you can plan your machining around what's best for the part.